Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or evening. I guess it's dark, so I'll say good evening. Um, I don't know if other people had problems with the high winds last night, the rain, and hopefully your homes are safe and you didn't lose power. Your friends and family are okay. So there are five commissioners here. So we've met the quorum. We're starting officially at 6.39. So for the roll call, let's just all introduce ourselves. We'll go around the room. Ernest, if you could begin. Ernest is saying, hi. Oh, we'll just wait for the camera. Ernest says, Hi, I'm Ernest Covington, and I'm the executive director of the Rhode Island Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. So is it, it's going back to Tim? I thought we were going around. Um, so who? Yeah. I thought the way it was explained to me was that um, Kendra was going Tim's to saying, here. no, I'm next. So Tim is saying, I'm Tim Riker, and I use him, her, him, I'm sorry. I'm the chair, I'm the chair for the um, facilitating this meeting, the Rhode Island Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. I think it's better by voice, right? It doesn't matter. If, if you I'm want to sign, it's your preference. It's fine, oh boy. So, fine. so if I could just um, interject here for one second to Tim. Um, I thought that the setup was that um, the camera would be facing Tim and Ernest. And then if there was um, signing outside of Tim and Ernest, that it would go to Kendra, um, to Mirror. And if needed, um, Joan would move because uh, there was um, feedback about the panning of the camera last time. So um, please just let me know what you prefer. I will do whatever it is that you prefer. So with everybody's names, just to begin with, with the introductions, we don't, we don't have to pan the whole camera around. So I'm wondering if it'd be faster rather than having people introduce themselves. I'll just do all the names Tim's saying. I think that might be easier. And, I know we're starting late. So just, Kimmy, if you want to sign, she'll mirror you and the camera will come back to her. So that's just your decision. And it doesn't matter, I'll voice today. Um, and, and just a question, if people do want to sign for themselves, where should they be positioned? Anywhere, because she can see them, she'll mirror them. Okay. And then the camera will come on, on to Kendra. So the decision is to mirror, just mm -hmm. to make sure. And Tim is going to introduce everybody anyway, but. So Tim was saying, just in the interest of time, we started a little bit late and I just wanna make sure that we, we finish quickly. So I'll just give, we don't need to deal with the camera. So my name, as I said, Tim Riker, I'm the chair. This is Kimberly Marthers. She's a commissioner. Let me go to the, I'll introduce the other commissioners first. Bunmi Asho, she's a commissioner. Betsy Beach, she's the secretary. Then we have Caroline Obrecht. She is the vice chair. And we have community members. And the person running the um, meeting, the, the tech part of it is Bethany Link. She's helping with our assist, assisting us with tech. And the public is here. We have Amy Slezak, S-L-E-Z-A-K. 
We have the two interpreters. We have Joan Wattman, W-A-T-T-M-A-N, and Kendra, and her last name is a challenge. It's Timco, T-I-M-K-O, hyphen, H-O-C-H, K-E-P-P-E-L. <laughs> he said, I, I won't be able to get that. Timco Hot Kipple. She got it though. The, the cart got it. Perfect. All right. Tim says, I want different people to read the uh, vision and mission and the guiding principles. If you'd be willing to, I'm going to say, yeah, Timmy, Timmy's going to do that. <laughs> I'm in a voice, okay? Oh, all right. I'm in a voice. Yep. 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 Okay, so vision. Uh, R-I-C-D-H-H aspires to be recognized <clears throat> as the central resources and advocate for the deaf, deaf blind, and hard of hearing citizens in Rhode Island. Keep going. Okay. So our mission is to provide innovative leadership in public policy, advocacy, service delivery, and accessibility throughout the ocean state. RICDHH ensures opportunities for every deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing person to become an empowered and contributing Rhode Island citizen. Guiding principles, communication, to ensure that all Rhode Island deaf and hard of hearing citizens have full access to public audio and visual information and communication through sign language interpreter services, captioning and technology. Opportunity, to create new opportunities through advocacy, policy, education, employment, and legislation for all Rhode Island deaf and hard of hearing citizens. Equality, to promote equality in the communities and society for all Rhode Island deaf and hard of hearing citizens. Very good, thank you. So ultimately we'll go around, you'll take over that next week, next time we have a meeting, Betsy. Caroline, put me. So we're going to take turns doing it. So one of you will be another commissioner. We'll take the responsibility to say those. Mm -hmm. All right. It does help us, I think, reminding us why we're here. You know, that we're serving the public, that we're doing these things for citizens here. We're going to start with public comments. Did you have a comment? Amy saying a question, I do. And you're gonna mirror Kendra? It's up to you, however you wanna do it, yes. So yes, if the camera could go to Kendra. There's two points, one moment. Okay. So, last week when we were talking about legislation, I had some thoughts that the commission could be involved with the community in writing a new bill or in you know, advocating with their legislature. And I'm thinking about you know, whether or not the board could take that on. That's my first question to the commissioners. And I'd like to have an answer on that um, about the bills. Do people have any comments before I go on to my next comment? Tim is saying, I mean, all right, I'm waiting for the camera, great. Um, so my understanding right now, it's the end of October already. So there's only two or three months before the next, the General Assembly starts again. And I'm thinking that it's, there's a short amount of time. We need to figure out what the priority is about bills. And 
if the community were involved, I think that would take several steps. And I don't know if we plan to introduce any bills, maybe Ernest has that information. I don't know if you have any comments about introducing bills. And Ernest says, yes. Um, we want the community to be involved. We want to get the pulse of the community. We want to see if there's any bills that would benefit them. And the commission does want to set up meetings with the community. Remember, we did a legislative um, forum in the past where audience members could come and share their concerns because people were frustrated trying to reach out to the state house, to their representatives and senators. It's very difficult to get them all to come in in person. Mm -hmm. You know, we have we have these things ready, mm -hmm. but it keeps on getting put off. That's you know, we would like to be able to support access. And I remember last Wednesday when we talked about the bills in unfinished business. You know, if the community gave us feedback on that, we could get some development about it. What I found is over the many years, bills do get introduced, but they never get passed. And there are many bills that if they did pass would really help the community. So the community needs to partner with us and then we can help advocate for those. You know, we're not gonna do that in isolation, like go, if we speak for the community, the legislators are mm -hmm. never going to pass that. But if mm -hmm. the community is there speaking, mm -hmm. and it, you know, for the last mm -hmm. two years, we really haven't had any action on it at all. A lot of it due mm -hmm. to COVID. I'm still learning the process. I mean, I came in two years mm -hmm. ago, and now we've identified a few priority bills, mm -hmm. and we need to check in with the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I appreciate your comment, Amy, because I really do want to get on that as soon as possible. Amy's saying, okay, I'll move on to the second comment. I'll wait for the, yep. And she's saying, um, thank you, Ernest and Tim, for those comments. I would like to have the community involved. I'm sure that they, they have issues that they want to talk about. We're going to have a new governor next year, and I'd like to work together with the Board of Election to see if we can have complete access. Because, you know, in the goals that we just read, it says communication access for all Rhode Island citizens. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that they're informed while we go through the election process. And Ernest says, yes. I'll, I'll respond to that. Ernest says, yes, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a big election coming up in 2022. We have a new governor, mm -hmm. new senators. Mm -hmm. So our goal, of course, is to have complete access. Back in 2020, the last year that we had elections, mm -hmm. it wasn't, I don't feel it was mm -hmm. as accessible. And mm -hmm. so we do need to propose a lot more of those kind of um, communication issues to be resolved. And thank you for your comment on that. Tim says, I wanna add also, in the past, we had the Rhode Island Association of the Deaf and the Rhode Island Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf work together and they made a blog from a script to promote um, to promote a bill and the staff were saying that they needed more research, but they were volunteering. I know several of us volunteered to be involved. And now for 2022, I think we need to revisit that. We need to think about the, 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 um, how much staff time would be devoted to that. So thank you. Thanks, Amy, for that feedback. So, are there any other public comments? I think we're done with that item. So we'll move on. The unfinished business. The big topic tonight is nominations for new officers for this next term of a year. What we have found in the past, we tended to vote in September, October, and then annually 
we get new officers. We need a chair, a vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. And then each of the, the uh, treasurer and the secretary can have assistants, but the four main officers get elected. So I wanted to know if somebody wanted to begin now with the nomination, if somebody is interested in becoming an officer, or if you are currently an officer, if you want to continue in that position. So the first, I know there's only five of us tonight, but I'd like to check with the five of us who are here. You know, I had already expressed my interest in transitioning out of being chair. I've been doing this for six years and I'd like to move forward. I don't want to be an institution. I, and also I have so many other commitments right now, my own, you know, health and the program that I'm working with at Brown is, is growing. I need to pass that torch. And I'd be happy to help mentor somebody and make sure the transition is smooth. So if somebody's interested in doing that, carrying that on, I think, you know, people, we could move around changing some of the responsibilities, delegating some of the things and giving a lot of support to that person to make sure that the process is as smooth as possible. I don't want anybody feeling totally overwhelmed or feeling like they, you know, they're not getting the support that they needed. Prior chairs could also give a lot of support and insight. I think my term goes to June, I believe, or July 1st. Um, so I would, I would obviously finish my term and I'd be a support for the person during that period. And then anytime after, people can all, always contact me by email or phone call. I'm available to help the new chair. So I don't know if anybody, I'd like to open it up for discussion, see if people express interest in it. And if anybody has anybody that they want to nominate. Ernest has got his hand up. Um, Ernest says, I know some of you have been officers for quite a while and some of you are new and it might be hard to think about taking mm. on the chair role. But don't be concerned. You can do a chair position short term mm -hmm. as like an interim until somebody else mm -hmm. comes in. We're, we're working with innovative strategies to develop a system of mentoring so that there'll be coaching and support. Innovy has given us a proposal and they will help coach as well as Tim. So if somebody was interested in moving into that position, even on an interim basis, it could be somebody who is interested but is hesitant because they need a lot of help and support. And we will have a support system between Tim and Innovate. We won't be like hanging you out to dry where you're going to be drowning on your own. I'm hoping somebody steps up to become chair who has a new vision, you know, and, and uh, new insights. And Ernest is saying, we have Drew and David and Brett. I'm trying to think of the fourth person who's Tina. here tonight. Uh, Tina. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. So Brett has already announced that he is stepping off the board. So the three that them would still be here would be Tina, Drew, and David. Bunmi, you're in your second year, so you could run for chair. Yeah. You qualify. So it's something to think about for the people here who have not yet been officers. Tim is saying, 
people are thinking. And so I'll give people some time. It's quiet. I'll just say that. Um, one moment. Go, yeah, go to Kendra. Okay. I'm the basically the coordinator, the chair of the Hearing Loss Association of Rhode Island. And we just lost over half of our board members moved out of state during COVID. So David Abel just moved this week to Connecticut. We lost three others who have all moved out of state. And I need to figure out that group before I take on chairing another group. It could be that that group, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get new people to fill those roles on our steering committee or not. So I'll know better, but not, I don't know right now. I'm happy to stay secretary, which does involve some hours between meetings. I understand. Brenda is saying, yeah. Tim is saying, Betsy has done a great job with being secretary, keeping the minutes. And it's very important to have documentation to make sure that all of these items are filed with the state. So really, Betsy, you've done wonderfully. And you know, if you are willing to continue, that would be great. Amy says, I have a question. Um, it can go to Kendra. Um, Amy's saying, I'm just wondering if there's other people in the community who might be considered as board members. And Tim is saying, I'll wait for the camera. The process for people to become board members, we have two vacancies and pretty soon we're gonna have another vacancy. So the vacancies, you apply, you go through an interview process and then the commission, the commissioners make a proposal to the governor. The governor makes a decision. He could actually pick somebody else and disregard our recommendation. Usually he follows our recommendation and he picks the person we have proposed. But that can be, it can take some time. Our bylaws require us to have people who can serve one year before they become an officer. And I don't know if that is you know, strict. If we don't have anybody who could be an officer, could we suspend that? So we could allow people in their first year to come into their officer position. A lot of our commissioners now are new. I mean, we have parliamentary procedures and I think it would be possible at this point for everybody, I think to vote to suspend those bylaws if we had a strong candidate who had some background in leadership and wanted to take it on, but was in their first year. But if it's a person who doesn't know the commission, doesn't know how it runs, that would be a challenge to take on leadership when you're learning a whole new organization. It depends on the situation and who the, who the um, candidate would be. It would be very nice, let's say if we could get new commissioners to join and they had good leadership training and experience. And they, were, they knew that like a year from now, they'll take on more leadership. Then we could transition those positions of the officers into those new people, knowing a year from now, that'll happen. Do people have comments on... 
Can we make nominations? Can I make a nomination, Ernest? The same. <laughs> um, let's see. Can you make a nomination? No, because you're not a commissioner. I don't think. I don't think you can. I mean, because Ernest says, I would say I'd love to have Kimmy be chairperson, and we could give her support and training. She's been involved in a long time. I think it's five years, four years now. Mm -hmm. four years and it would be great if you as a late deaf in person and you're bilingual with english and asl it would be a good model for people you know we're trying to show that we represent mm -hmm. all deaf and hard of hearing and deaf blind people in the state it would be great to have somebody you know be somebody representing a group that mm -hmm. doesn't usually get represented mm -hmm. i know your commitments with mm -hmm. work and all of that but we would certainly help with, with any support we have. I think it would be nice to have somebody who's not a, a deaf person who signs. You know both worlds and you can really represent both, mm -hmm. the hearing and the deaf. I, that's my thought, mm -hmm. um, that you would be a great chairperson. Are you, what are you thinking, mm -hmm. uh, Kimmy? Would you consider it? Mm -hmm. Oh, boys. I feel... I feel overwhelmed by the thought of it. Mm. However, I do like a challenge. I never want to, you know, let people down. I feel I would be able to do it. However, I would need some serious mentoring or mentorship. Um, you know, policies, protocols. When you're speaking bylaws, I'm like, <laughs> which bylaws? You know, like I'm trying to keep in track and in line of everything that we have to do and the things that we want to do. So I think if I had the right mentor or the right guidance, it would be feasible. And I would consider it on a short term period, mm -hmm. seeing if anybody else had, you know, the will or the want to continue it. Okay. Tim saying, yeah. Comments on, on what we're discussing? Caroline? Yeah, we'll go back to Kendra. This is Caroline. Kimmy, I think you'd be great for many of the reasons that Ernest said, and also because I've seen you on this board for a long time. I like all the areas that you represent. Um, I appreciate, I really appreciate that it's overwhelming. <laughs> and uh, so I think you would get support from, from the other commissioners and of course mentoring. I'll second that, I'll do whatever this is I Betsy. can to support you. Been good to have you on the board, and I think it's been a number of years now. So. Tim is saying, I also think you'd be great, and I would be very willing to support you. And also, we have any of the uh, strategies we've signed a contract with to support us in this transition period, to do trainings and to provide a board manual so that, that we could work through things together. I'm sure I'll learn this new things too. <laughs> some of the, uh, you know, some of the things that I've done have just been learning as I go. So you already have an understanding of the structure. You know, you know, the executive director, you know, the commissioners, you know how we function with the staff at the office. There's a lot of information you already have. And it wouldn't be like this huge learning curve, I don't think, because you've got that. We could make it a very smooth transition. I think a big part of the work is setting up the agenda, facilitating you know, the meeting and making sure that um, everything is in order. What I've done, 
with COVID, and hopefully as the numbers go down, there'll be less of that soon, <laughs> I hope. Um, I'm hoping we've been through the last surge. We can go back to kind of quasi normal situation from here on in. And I think that things could be more established, like how we work with the legislature, how we work with the community. And there are a lot of things that we've been wanting to do. And I'd be very happy to support you, you know, like the, the different, um, like serving on the ed committee or on different parts, the smaller committees, it wouldn't be like, I, I'd still be around, so I wouldn't be like um, abandoning you. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I'll have the camera go back to Kendra. Thank you. We're just checking on the spelling. Kimberly. So Kimberly is speaking. She says, I usually spell it K-I-M-M-I in the, in the nickname. So I would be willing to do it because I feel like I would have all of your support and that would be ideal. So as long as you promise me that support and it's accessible support, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Yes, or this is saying. Yes, Betsy. This is Betsy Beach. I'm, oh, mm -hmm. One moment. We're going, yep. Go ahead. I, I don't know if this is on the agenda. I don't, I, I'm uh, concerned about people who can't get here because of, of having small children, either because of COVID or just because their children are under half, you know, under six months old. And I can totally understand not being able to come because of bedtimes and the intense work it takes to parent a child that age. But um, I mean, that's, I mean, I would love for you to go into your first year after Tim leaves with a full board here that actually can make the meetings. So I think at some point it, and not now, but I, at some point I wanna, think maybe with any of these strategies about those board members that haven't been able to come for quite a few months. And this is Tim. I think that that's, it's gonna be an ongoing issue and we should be discussing that um, definitely with our consultants, with Innovy. When we recruit people and we know somebody's gonna be a good commissioner and they're invested, that they either have experience or interest and they wanna learn, you know, and they're ready to jump in. And it's something to discuss, I think, upcoming is how, the cohort that we have when we identify people who are potential, you know, people that we want to develop into leadership and train, to give them the tools to be able to succeed and take over the board to, you know, to make it a strong board ongoing. I mean, we've been, we've been meeting, I thought it's been a great a great um, board. I know there's been a lot of changes with COVID and going from Zoom to live now again. There's a lot of challenges. There's been crises that we've gone through and we've dealt with it. And I feel like people have their own personal lives and it's impacted, COVID affected everything, but people, things change in their lives, their work changes, they can't continue on going. But I'm hoping that we could get a new cohort of new board members who are really ready to take on some responsibilities. And remember that the governor picks those people, we recommend them and we can give them that support. But that's something I'm thinking about 
is you know having people who are ready to take that stuff that kind of a commitment on all right so we have betsy beach willing to continue being secretary we have kimberly marthers willing to take on i said continue but take on not continue <laughs> take on chair and Caroline, are you willing to stay on as vice chair? Are you, what are you considering? So uh, the, the camera can go to Kendra. Mm -hmm. And this is Caroline speaking. So I'm thinking that my time on the commission is coming to an end, but I certainly don't want to leave the commission or Kimberly high and dry. So, so I will um, keep all of that in mind and not just bolt, but, but I do think it's, I, I think I've been on the commission for seven years and that's a long time. Okay, it's back to me. Tim saying, Caroline, would you consider continuing for one more year or would you think shorter term, let's say six months minimum, would that be something you'd consider? I was thinking six months. This is Caroline speaking. But I'm not gonna, but my motto in life is don't be a jerk. So, you know, if it's really bad timing, I'd stay a year. Okay, so this is Tim. So what we have at this point then are three officers. We've got, I mean, Brett has planned to step down and he's the treasurer. So we have an available slot as a commissioner and an available officer. We have Budmi here. <laughs> I don't know, Budmi, I don't know if you're interested in any of these positions. <laughs> She's shaking her head, Budmi is shaking her head. <laughs> for me most of the i used Let's, to be the moment. treasurer and i still have the power oops one moment yeah good this is betsy speaking go ahead i i used to be the treasurer and then i became the secretary of me and then so i am still able to sign the payroll and that is probably the most important thing that you have to consistently do as treasurer. Um, and not much more than that. <laughs> Other than go to the executive board meetings, which means when we get together, all the officers to have a special meeting to work up a plan to present to the full commission. So you would be in that group to think about what to present to the commission. But in terms of ongoing duties, it's mostly this. Brett and I have both been signing the payroll. I'm signing it tonight because he's not here. This is Tim. Tim says, also because of the consulting that we'll have with NV Strategies, we will be talking about the board and you know, those four executive officers do have executive committee meetings, but 
everybody on the board should have certain responsibilities and delegate those. You know, those roles should be very clear. And Inabi said that they have a proposal for that to really clarify the, the different positions of the people who are not officers, how they're involved with the board, their involvement with the different committees, and we'll give them more training so that they develop a bigger picture of leadership. I don't think we're gonna throw anybody, you know, overwhelm somebody with a bunch of new responsibilities. I don't wanna force anybody to take anything on that they're uncomfortable with, but as Betsy said, she signs the payroll and has done so in the past. The treasurer does not have a lot of duties. I actually think the secretary has the most hours mm -hmm. that they have to put in between meetings and the chair in developing the agenda and also facilitating the meeting. The vice chair, I depend on a lot for support in discussing items. You know, so Innovy will help us to support those roles and to really clarify what the different members of the commission are doing and what those four officers are doing. The chair is focused on running the meeting and the vice chair assists the chair. But I think the treasurer and secretary duties will become a lot clearer as well once we get some consulting. And Amy had a, um, her hand up. She said, so we'll go to Kendra. So Amy's saying, I just wanted to say, just to clarify, Right now, there are you have a deaf and a hard of hearing um, slot, and I'm wondering as far as like David Milani and Drew Balsley, she's saying she can't come here in person, and David just had a new baby. So, are they going to commit to staying on or not? And Tim's saying, "Yeah, wait, I'll wait for the camera to come back." To kind of continue, to continue. I said, I said, stay. Oh, you're not hearing me correctly, um, Carp. Um, to continue or to stay on is what I said. Sorry. So this is Tim. Back in July or August, we had a meeting and we didn't meet a quorum. And I think it was partly because people were surprised at the announcement that we'd be back face to face. And then in August, we tried to, now I might have the timing off. There was, we were gonna have a meeting, but we knew we weren't gonna have a quorum. So we went ahead to September and then we canceled that meeting because of all the other events that month. Our first meeting in person was, basically with the full quorum was last month, well, last week. So we missed two meetings in a row. And we never, um, I have, we have a rule about people missing a certain amount of meetings being asked to leave. And I've never had to ask anybody to leave. I've never had to say to the governor, you have to take somebody off. I usually have people make their own decision about stepping down if they know that they can't continue their duties. I know, you know, people commuting from Boston, it's too much, too much driving. So they, they, there have been people who've stepped down because of that. Um, and with COVID, I know it's an issue that people are uncomfortable. And we've tried to support people. We know, you know, we had Zoom, but then the governor reinstated um, the policy for the commissioners, and they did allow us to have some flexibility with the service providers, the interpreters in the car. We do have two slots that are for deaf people. And we have nine, nine people, nine commissioners currently, so if we had the full group, it would be 11. 
and you're right, we have David and Drew as two of the people. David has the baby, and I don't know if he'll come to the next meeting. And we have Drew, who, Drew, and I cannot spell her name tonight, but Drew, um, I don't want to say she's never going to show up in person, but with COVID, she does not feel comfortable coming. And if she's required to do so, she can't be here in person. Brett is representing uh, people who do not sign and who are, you know, hard of hearing or deaf, but don't sign. So his slot will become available when he steps down. So we have these two people assigned to us. One is from the House of Representatives, Representative Handy, and the other is the Senator, um, Hannah Gallo, G-A-L-L-O, Senator Gallo. They don't come to meetings, but they are supposed, I mean, they could. If we're proposing bills, let's say we would sit down with the two of them. They are assigned to work with the commission. Um, if you want to move it back to Kendra, Amy's saying, I'm going to just move my uh, mask so that people can. I'm not trying to kick anybody off the board. That's no, that's not my interest. What I want to see is a very strong commission. It's so important for the community. And both of these people are very, very strong. And I'm hoping they do stay. And I'm wondering what, what's available because I want to see the commission grow. I want to have people who are a good fit with the people who are here. And there's a lot of things changing right now. We had COVID and then annually, there's always changes. I mean, the you know, terms that people use every day, you know, you have to think about the community has changed and we have to match with society as society changes. That's all I meant. I don't mean trying to kick anybody out or dropping anybody from the commission. What I want to do is see, you know, if we have a slot available, who we could think of and maybe that we could approach people and share what the commission actually does. And I can't really share that if it's, you know, if the seed is not available. So just to think, oh, it's a deaf seat or a hard of hearing, somebody who does not know sign or no sign, then I could approach people once I know what seats are available and say, you know, would you consider being on the commission? Was that clear? And Ernest is saying something. Um, just to respond to you. So right now we have nine and there are two available slots. This is both for deaf people who use ASL, both of those, then we'd have the full complement of 11. So if those two were both, those positions are both um, held for signers who are deaf. Now, Brett, if he steps off, that third position will be available. That's people who are deaf, mm -hmm. but don't use deaf or hard of hearing, but don't use sign, use speech to communicate. So that would be the third position. Let me come back to to Tim. So Tim is saying, we have made, we've identified some people who might be interested and, you know, we talked to some of them as the, the, you know, when the terms were finishing up in July, we can start to approach people. It would be nice to have like a six month lead so we do some training and orienting, coaching. They could shadow us. And then when they apply and we interview them, I don't know exactly how the process is gonna look because we're gonna have consulting from Innovy and they're gonna have some ideas as well. But this group of people who might come on who are willing to apply for July 1st of 2022, we might have a group of candidates. And there are some other commissioners I know who might step down. I might step down. And then we have this cohort available of strong, strong uh, candidates. And then we would recommend those people to the governor to pick, and we could transition into this new group. I feel like we could have people who have a lot of experience 
and they could take more responsibility. And then at that point, if Kimmy says, you know, she doesn't want to continue to be chair, she wants to hand that over to somebody. If somebody had finished the cycle for the one year or whatever, and also some commissioners like David, let's say, as his child gets older, and he might be willing to take on more leadership with with COVID over, possibly Drew would come back in person to meetings. There's all sorts of things that might happen between now and July. So I'd like to look at like six months from now and start to recruit people and think about people who are interested, who could be ready to step in and be confident, not be scared because they've had enough training. That's what I would, that's my fingers crossed, but yes, that's my, my thought. Yes, Betsy. Yeah, I would say that. So this is Betsy. Yep. That um, I don't know for myself past June or July. I've been on for 10 years, which is quite a long time. Uh, so I have, if I have someone that I've trained to do sec the secretary, be the secretary, then that may be a good transition point for me too. But I will definitely be here doing the secretarial work through June. Tim is saying, I think for now, but me, I, I didn't know if you were even considering being treasurer or what your vision is of what, before we, you know, before we nominate people to get approved for the four officers or three officers, if that's all we have. But I, I wanted to just invite you to say something if you want to speak. Oh, um, <laughs> this is for uh, me. This is the first, uh, no, this is the second meeting we're having uh, in person. So I haven't really seen the whole group. You said we have nine members. I am a strong believer in diversity. Right now we have uh, Kim, she's a female. Kim, who is going to be the next chair? We have uh, Betsy, we have um, Caroline. Caroline, all female. So I think um, we should mix it up a little bit with maybe a male or something. I, cause I, I, I don't like to see all, like I wouldn't like to see all female officers. Likewise, I wouldn't like to see all, uh, like I would not like to see all male officers. Same thing, I would like to see all female officers. Mm -hmm. Ernest is nodding. Tim is saying, Tim is saying, um, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that comment. We, I mean, Brett is stepping down and I would be transitioning the chair position and David is the new baby. So for this next period, I don't know if it's possible <laughs> to have another male, maybe after July 1st, but that's why I'm thinking, you're talking about diversity, about gender, but there's also racial diversity. So you're talking about, you know, we wanna bring people in with different backgrounds, different experiences. Um, some people have worked in social work or legal arenas, and they're involved in different communities, hard of hearing. So everybody contributes something different. And I think gender is not the only basis to make that decision. For me, I think it's interesting because in the Supreme Court, after Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, RBG, I remember somebody asking her um, something about um, all Supreme Court justices being women. And she said it had been all men for so long. There's nothing wrong with all nine justices being women. women. Um, 
So that's another point of view as well, because I don't know if there's a mail available between now and June. And Ernest is nodding. If, if somebody's, we can go to Kendra if, if somebody's going to say something. <laughs> I mean, if you do not feel ready and you've made that decision tonight, then we have the three officers that are ready. We can make that as a motion for those three officers. And maybe at the next meeting, we can revisit the treasurer position again. Right now, we have Betsy Beach, willing to, to who is authorized to sign payroll, excuse me. Um, you know, so we have that ability, even though she's not treasurer. At the next meeting, when we might reconsider, so she might be interested, we might have other people and we can take that on again and discuss it. But I, I think then if we have three definite officers, we should make that motion now. Um, I'm open to hearing a motion from one of the commissioners for that slate, the three officers. I move that we approve the three officers as nominated for chairperson, vice chairperson, and secretary. Kim says, um, does anyone second? Me has just seconded. Okay, so is there discussion on the motion on the floor? Seeing no discussion, let's vote. All saying aye, you can raise your hand to indicate. So there are none opposed. It's unanimous. Five, five voted in favor and none voted to oppose or abstain. Congratulations, Kimmy. Here, I'll give you my papers and you can take over. <laughs> so that's great to be, to be at that place with this. And we need to think about, I mean, Brett has not officially left, but he has stated his intention to do so. So that's something to think about. Let's move on to new business. How long have we committed the interpreters to? Just an hour. Um, we can move very quickly. So the interpreters are telling Tim we're booked six to eight. And Amy's, Amy's leaving. So Tim is saying we wanted to talk about recipients of awards for the coffee hour. And we wanted Paul Malloy to be approved. He passed away over the summer. We want him to receive a posthumous award. And you can see the letter that's in your packet. Let me send an email. Asking um, for Paul Malloy to be, um, to be a given an award. If people feel comfortable, I'd like to hear a motion to that effect. And Ernest says to stand up as well. Um, but I, I'll, um, all right, that's perfect. Ernest, we'll start with you and then we can go to Kendra so that uh, she can mirror what people are saying. Mm. For the coffee hour, it's gonna be at the Rhode Island School for the Deaf. It used to be at the State House, but the State House was not available. So it'll be November 3rd from four to seven. And the good news is we have a lot of organizations setting up booths. We have 35 organizations set up and we have a lot of government agencies who are gonna be part of it as well. And it's going to be in the gymnasium at the School for the Deaf. I'm looking for interpreters. Where we don't have any interpreters. I asked Joan tonight, but we need more interpreters. So we're recruiting people. And what I'm planning to do is have a hybrid event where it's on Zoom on a big screen 
and we can have people participate. They can explain some like history. We've been having the coffee hour for 18 years and we can have a show of pictures just for people's entertainment and enjoyment. And I'm excited because so many organizations are gonna be involved with it. We used to only have like 20 or 25 with 35 organizations, it's excellent. So I'm hoping that the commissioners can all make it. And we're also having the kickoff of our Rhode Island Commission 30th year anniversary. We're doing like a one year um, celebration from November of 2021 to November of 2022. So the kickoff will be at the coffee hour. Tim says, thank you to, to Ernest. And now, yeah, mm -hmm. it was just thank you. And then go, go to Kendra so that Betsy can speak. <laughs> Oh, this is I'll make a motion that we um, give a posthumous award to Paul Malloy. Ooh. Was tremendous um, in his time in Rhode Island with um, improving the lives of deaf and hard of hearing people. Tim says, is it, it mentions the specific, um, the recognition award is what when they suggested, right? Is the, the particular award. And it, so the, the recognition award. All right, that Paul Malloy gets the recognition award. All right, so friendly amendment, I guess could be in order. Um, Betsy Beach made a motion to do a recognition award to Paul Malloy posthumously. Do I hear a second? Yes, Caroline Obrecht has seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. Then we'll take a vote. All in favor, raise your hands. Great. It's unanimous. Five have voted in favor and none opposed or abstaining. Good. That's, it's sad because he's gone, but I feel like Margie Malloy, his wife, Margaret, will be so appreciative of her husband. We can ask her uh, to come up and accept the award on his behalf. So, I think that's it for the items of business. Are there any announcements before we wrap up? No announcements? All right. Then we're adjourning our meeting at 741. I want to thank you for your time, and I appreciate you coming back for the second week in a row. And we finished this business, I feel a lot <laughs> weight off my shoulders, handing it over to Kimmy, and I'll give you all the support you need. <laughs> but I feel a lot better having handled this tonight. So thank you.